Welcome to the best time of the month, the time where I tell you the top 10 albums from a particular month, and this month is the month of May. Almost halfway through the year, almost into June, you bastards, and we've had some great music, and today I'm going to give you 10 of them from the month of May. So before I get started with my list, you know how this shit goes, pop down in the comments below your top 10 albums from May 2021, and let's get this shit fucking rolling. So coming in at a 10 spot for me is Grave Miasma with Abyss of Wrathful Deities. This is a nice tasty slice of death metal, old school kind of death metal, the vibe on this album. The whole thing is kind of murky, not quite as murky as an album we'll get to on this list. Wink wink, nudge nudge. But this is still great and it's still a fantastic album from this month. Catchy, catchy riffs, very caveman-esque, just kind of harkening back to the glory days of death metal back in the 1992 or 1991, that kind of era. It sounds like it could fit right at home with them. Great album, great vocals, great thunderous riffs, exactly what you want on a death metal album, and that's what you get delivered with Grave Miasma. So yeah, thoroughly enjoyed this album. Uh, it's not the best death metal album of the month, we'll get to that, but it's certainly worth your time, so it's coming here. Number 10. So number 9 we have Dordi Duda? Dordi Da? Dordi? I don't know how to say it, but the um, album title is called Ha. So it's Dordi Da with Ha. They did that on fucking purpose. This is a head scratcher. This is a proggy album. I guess that's the word for it. It incorporates so many different styles of music. You got deaf growls, you got clean singing. You got like harp and horn sections, you got acoustic stuff, you got clean singing, growling, you got black metal fucking blast beats and intense sections, shrieking, growling. This is insane. This album's goddamn insane. The reason it's so low on my list is because it takes a while to like digest, and one month is not enough to digest this beast. It needs multiple listens, multiple, multiple, multiple listens. But if for people who kind of want something a bit different with their metal, then this prog metal album is definitely for you because, oh my god, it's very different. It's the most different sounding album I've heard all year. Very experimental, very cool. And they sing in their native tongue, which I, I think is Romania, if I'm not mistaken. Let me know if I'm mistaken on that. So it's very cool, authentic, and just balls to the walls insane. I love it. I love it, but it I needs more time. Maybe it'll go into the end of the year list at the end of the year? Maybe, maybe. But now it's coming in number nine here in May and it's definitely worth your time, go check it out. Next up, another weird one, Abyss Cult with uh, G Yang. This is a Funeral Doom album. Funeral Doom, we've got Death, we've had Prog, and now onto Funeral Doom, what's going on? This is a varied list. This, you'll know if you like, if you like Funeral Doom, but this is a bit of a twist. Again, kind of like the Dordi Da band. Um, this one is very unique as well. It has a lot of Tibetan themes within and it sings in that kind of style as well. I think they said there was like 20 different Tibetan instruments used within this album. It's very long songs, very slow, ex kind of what you'd expect with Funeral Doom, but with loads of twinges, which is very new, like the Tibetan theme, the lyrics, and the instruments used. So it's another interesting album from this month. This month is very um, underground heavy. There's not a lot of big name releases. I mean, there was, but for me, these ones just the underground kind of, you know, they blew up. They blew up, and there's gems throughout. So this is one of the gems. I love it. I love Funeral Doom. It's my favorite genre. So of course I'm gonna rep this band. I'm gonna rep this album because it's very interesting, very cool, and I like it. Next up, I'm going to have to read Inferno. That's easy enough to pronounce. <sighs> Parad. Paradigma Phosphenes of a Fanatic Eternity. Fucking up. You know, I'm an English speaker and I can't even speak English words. This is a mental album. This is like, it's, it's black and death, dissonant black and death, kind of similar to say Portal. <laughs> what are you doing? Or a Ulcerate, one of those kind of, or Imperial Triumphant. Very dissonant, very aggressive, very just chaotic. Noise, walls of noise, but 
on this album, I do think it is more melodic than some of the other ones I mentioned before. It is easier to get into, it's more melodic, and you can kind of follow along with it. There's an abundance of that kind of material this year, and this is another one of the best from that bunch. And you may get another one next. So, following on from Inferno, which is definitely a great one for all you Dissonant fans, we have Portal. Legendary Portal. Come on, it's got to be here. The kings of this dissonant kind of metal, very heavy, probably one of the heaviest bands ever, and this album is is very heavy still, but it's kind of a bit slower, a bit more doomier on this album compared to a lot of the other releases they've done, and you know I like my doom, so of course this one's a bit better, there's a lot more um, passages which repeat themselves than on a lot of the other albums, it's a bit more, I don't want to say melodic, but it's probably easier to get into, so I'd say this album's a great starting point with the band, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'm gonna listen to it again and again and again, because it's that kind of music that I love, and Portal are the kings of the game, so of course it's gonna make it here on the top 10. Probably the most famous one on this top 10, but yes, Portal delivers us the fucking guts again. Next up, some black metal for your bum bum. We have Clandestine Blaze with Secrets of Laceration. This is a fantastic black metal album. All these songs got them catchy. The riffs, the melodies get stuck in your head. This is a bloody banger. And I thought this was gonna be number one of the month. When I first heard it, I was like, this is easily number one. I love the melodies on this. I, I, I fucking adore it. Clandestine Blaze is a great goddamn band with loads of good albums. Um, controversy fucking side, they make good music. And this is another banger from the band that I wanted to put it top, but just too many other good albums came out. So that shows how good the month of May was that this amazing black metal album isn't my number one. Like, what the fuck? But it deserves to be here. It's Clandestine Blaze. It's one of the best. And yeah, I'm gonna keep playing it because it's that fucking memorable. Next up, Sabhankra, Death to Traitors. This is a black and thrash band. And I didn't know much about this band or album until I saw this is the most recent one I've listened to because I saw the artwork and I think black metal promotion. And I was like, that's fucking sick. My favorite animal's vultures and there's vultures on the cover ripping this fucking like Ra figure or Osiris, I don't know the actual deity's name. Um, is it Horus? I don't fucking know. Let me know down below what deity this one is. But yeah, like these vultures ripping it apart, I was like, that's some sick ass album cover. That's sick. I gotta listen to it, and oh my god, this is intense, black and thrash. It's similar to, say, Marduk. It's got that very intense energy, super in your face, super intense, a lot different to Clandestine, a lot different to some of these other bands like Portal, which is kind of, you know, it's, I don't wanna say mellow, it's definitely not mellow, it's heavy, but it's kind of in the background, whereas this is in your fucking face. I thoroughly enjoyed it, definitely a breath of fresh air within the genre, and come on, intense as hell, fun as hell, album cover is 10 out of 10, so yeah, it's coming high, it's coming here. Next up, probably one of the best death metal albums of the fucking year, and it's only number three, what's going on? This is Ominous Sleep of Putridity by Morbific. Holy shit balls. This is like you're crawling through slime with flies swarming around you, leeches on you. It's basically like that uh, Valley of Defilement in Demon Souls. It's fucking gross. Kind of reminds me of the album uh, from Sansquizgabog. Yeah, sure. From last month. But this is way better. This is fucking shit on that. Holy crap, this is one of the best death metal albums of the fucking year, easily. Easily. Holy shit, from the starting out with squelching noises, and then ending with some songs, the flies like zzz around. The vocals are just fucking gnarly. The whole production is very slime ridden, and it just, every song has a catchy riff. Every song has a catchy riff. It's Bolt Thrower, but more death metal than Bolt Thrower. It's like, if you, you get Bolt Thrower, you dip it in some ooze, you then make everything way, way more like, I don't know, lower. <laughs> Everything's way lower. The growls are like, Ugh. a lot more slimy like that. And then you've got this band. Holy shit. This is one of the best. I want to put this number one now. I'm talking about it, but two of us, two of us took the biscuit. So yeah, this is here at number three. I'm going to move on before I pump it up to number one. So yeah, more biffic. Check it fucking out. So next up, number two, a masterpiece that I thought was gonna be number one. 
but another one just beat it. This is Vaconis. Vaconis with Odyssey. This is Stoner Doom Prog. Proggy Stoner Doom. Holy shit, I didn't even think those two could go together, but they fucking do. Long songs, but it's not like Sleep, where it's like, oh, there's a fucking hour-long song, and it's monotonous. I love Sleep, it's fucking amazing. I love the monotony of it, but this isn't like that. This is very progressive, very different. So many different, like, riffs in there, different sections within the songs. It is proggy Stoner Doom, and I didn't think you could do that, proggy Doom, but hell yeah, this does it. It's one of the best arts of as well. Aside from my number one. Holy shit, if you want something just fuzzy, slow, chunky, but also interesting and technical, you this is the one for you. I don't know how else to say it. It's Proggy Stoner Doom. What, what, what more could I say? It's fucking fantastic. It's fucking fantastic. It's one of the best of the month, and I like it. I like it. It's like Acid Mammoth from last month, which I really enjoyed. But you throw Opeth in there. <laughs> it's like that. It's, it's awesome. Singing's great as well. Yeah, one of my favourites of the month. It's got to come here. So that only leaves one number one. And it's a very strange black metal album. Of course it is. I mean, my last tops of the month. Let's, let's have a look at my tops of the month recently. So last month, it was Spectral Law. Before that, it was Mare Cognitum. I think one of the first ones was Ferritarium. So on, so on. So you can kind of guess what this one's going to be. And I'll fucking tell you, because I cannot pronounce it. It is Escotrillum with Dieth Requiem for the Serpent Telepath. There's no way I'm remembering that. As soon as I saw the art for this, I was hooked. I was hooked. I, I, I heard Eternity for Shaug last year, and it was pretty goddamn good. This, this is even better in my opinion. This is even better. Holy fucking shit. This kind of lingers on passages more than that one. And I like that with songs, kind of gives you more time to breathe, more time for it to soak in. And it does that with this album. This has catchy sections. It has great production as well. Very heavy at parts, very somber at parts. Intense as all fuck at parts. It's got everything within. It's kind of proggy as well. Kind of like Vaconis, but for black metal. It's so strange. It's a very weird alien-like album and the art complements the music. And I love how on the art, um, there's that woman at the side kind of doing the the um, the Bloodborne thing. <laughs> Am I the only one who noticed that? That looks like the fucking Bloodborne thing with Mikalash and those cage head people that do that. Um, I love it. From the art to the music held within, weird, spacey, technical black metal. It's got to be my number one, and of course it's my number one. Of course it's my number one, because it's fucking weird black metal. So yeah, that was my top ten of this month. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What's your top ten of May? Let me know down below, and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.